If you've been in sales for longer than 30 seconds, you've heard the adage, hey, we've got a smile and dial. This is a numbers game. You just gotta take a deep breath and grin and bear it, right? Um, if you've been in sales for longer than a day, you've heard the experts come swooping in and say, hey, look, that is the wrong approach. You've gotta do your research. You've gotta slow down. You've gotta uh, pick fewer contacts and, and make the most of those meetings. Let's turn the funnel upside down, right? And so if you're like me, you ping pong back and forth from both of these strategies and really just desperately wanting to be efficient but not really knowing what is really best, right? So here's, here's where I've come, come to in, when it comes to this is like, it, it all depends. There's four things that I think about when I think about which approach I want to take or uh, where I want to go. Uh, so the, the first thing to think about is what gets you in trouble. And, and what I mean by that is really what, what do you tend to get stuck in or bogged down? Are you the type of person that acts before they think, gets in trouble for speaking before they think? If that's you, I would suggest you slow down. Or if you're like me and you get bogged down with analysis, you like getting into the weeds, if you've scheduled out a prospecting block and I'm gonna do all this research and calls and at the end of it, you've made five phone calls, you need to speed up. Now, if part of that is a fear for calling, you need to be part of that smile and dial camp, okay? The next thing I would say is what can you leverage uh, of what you already know? If you're an expert at something, you, you tend to forget what it's like to hear that for the very first time. And you've got to remember that your buyers are hearing what you have to say for the very first time. Uh, so what can you leverage? How Have you already done work in their industry? Given their role, the role of the buyer, what kind of pain points can you predict that they would say? I would leverage what you already know and what experience you've already, you're bringing to the table before you have to feel like you do uh, a lot of research to meet with someone. The third thing to think about is what your buyers would expect you to know. Now, if you're calling someone, they don't expect you to know everything, but they, they do expect you to know uh, why you're calling and what you think might be helpful. Um, if you're calling a company that's been in the news recently, you probably should do a little bit of research and understand why the news, what the news outlets are saying, right? I'd also say that if you're calling a, a list that interacted with your website or requested some information from you, their expectation of your knowledge of them is quite low. They're really, uh, they're really uh, looking for something and you're just following up, right? So. I wouldn't hesitate reaching out to them. The last thing I would say is to do your own study. Figure out what works for you. And I would strip out any everything uh, uh, as part of your sales process and really just ask what books you the most meetings. For me, the reason why I, I'm pretty unclear about which approach is right is because I tend to get the same results for uh, each of these approaches. Um, whether I'm making 50 calls in an hour or 25, I, I really do book kind of the same amount of meetings. I, I would say it's gonna be different for every person, um, every scenario. Um, you have not mastered prospecting yet. Every, every time you go and pick up the phone, it's an opportunity to grow and get better and, and to learn from that experience.